things we're going to talk about today. And remember the Lord told us to get back to basics. One of the things we're going to talk about is agreement. We'll talk about forgiveness. And we're going to talk about commandment. Agreement, forgiveness, commandment. And you might be like, what do those three have in common? Well, these three right here should be our foundations as believers. This is what we build on. We build on an agreement, we build on forgiveness, and we build on the commandment. And we're going to take them one at a time so therefore, you can see how important it is, first and foremost, to have an agreement. I got smart. I made copies so therefore I can dream my accordions with myself trying to write all the way down. <laughs> Starting one. The soul and the spirit has to agree in order for them to walk together. Unless two or three agree, how can they walk together? So the soul and the spirit have to agree in order for them to walk together. So you have to renew the way that you have to renew the mind for the soul and the spirit to walk together. Um, you guys wasn't here Wednesday night. We did an illustration, and I want to call you guys same ones who gave the illustration. I told you you was going to do it again. All right. Come on, right? About agreement. Because I think we need to know what agreement is in order for us to know how yes. to agree. Right. Okay? Now, I'm going to talk to these guys for a minute, okay? So... <laughs> Who said they can hear us? See, I knew I put y'all together for a reason, okay? <laughs> Listen to this. Now, we are in the military, right? We are soldiers, right? Okay, and we march together. All right? But we have not dialogued on how we are going to march together. We just come together in agreement to say we're going to march together. All right? Now, because we have a dialogue about this agreement, okay, on how we're going to do this here, we always do it at, to our own understanding, okay? And I do it the way I do it, and they're going to do it the way they're doing, and we're going to march. Y'all ready? All right? Two, three, march. Oh, I'm oh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go march back here, okay? All right. Were we marching or were we walking? No, we were too cool, wasn't it? Because there was no dialogue, there was no agreement. Mm -hmm. And because there was no agreement, it's hard for us to walk together. Mm -hmm. So this is what God's saying, unless two agree, how can they walk together? Now we just have to understand this here. The soul and the spirit have to have an agreement in order for it to think out a matter in you the same. Yes. You understand me? Yes. So when we have dialogue, Okay, who's in the military here? Which one? You in the military. You in? ROTC. Military ROTC. Now, both of y'all have a concept of what a march is. I pray you do. I mean, especially when you was in the military. <laughs> okay, let me see your salute. Okay, it looks good to me. All right? All right. Now, attention. Okay, how did you know how to salute? Who taught you? Training. They teach you that basic training. Mm -hmm. Do everybody salute the same way? Yeah, huh? Yeah. Do everybody stand their attention the same way? Oh, yeah. So therefore, they have one way, to do it. one way to do it. So therefore, their one way came by a commandment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you seeing this now? Mm -hmm. By a commandment because the commandment calls order. Right. You got me? Right. So therefore, since there's order, now we are going to march. Now, I'm not, I've never been in the military before. 
So you're going to have to teach me how to, how to do this march thing. Okay, can you show me by example how to march across the floor? When you start off marching, you start off with attention. Uh huh. And you start off with your left foot. And normally there's someone who's calling cadence, which is, you know, left, right. Okay. And, you know, and um, you the platoon or whoever it is is pretty much just going to go on his commandment. Okay. And as he, you know, marches along with him, he's calling on friends. Okay. So you give me information. Okay. Yes. Now, 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 my mind is broadened on how to do this march thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, can you show me by example how to march? Okay, what you just seen take place there, right? Now, both of them have knowledge of doing this here. I'm the one without knowledge. Because I had an opportunity of witnesses, just as we read the word of Jesus when he walked the earth. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Yes. And we have a witness in his word on how to do this here, believer's life. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Now, it's described to us by the prophets. You understand me? by the apostles, by the preachers and by the teachers of the writers of God's word. Now once I've, I've, I've read that, I come in agreement with that's how to live. Right. I'm going to come in agreement as to how he say march. Right. So when I come in agreement as to how he say march, I've never been in the military before a day in my life. Because I see and understand how to march, go ahead. Ten, two. Thank you, gentlemen. I had to come in agreement with the instructor in order for us to pull that off. Are you following me? So therefore, if that was not order, then that would not have been an agreement. So it had to have some dialogue in order for the order to take place for us to walk together. Okay. I'll make it as simple as possible. I, I want to make this very, very simple because this is not difficult. God's word is not difficult. Sometimes we can get so deep in it that it becomes difficult. But if you keep it simple, you'll understand that it's all about God's loving you. And you reciprocating that love through you to other people is how you show God you love him. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. Now, it's God's will. Listen to me. It's God's will that we agree. It's God's will that we forgive. Give you a foundation scripture right quick. Let's go to 3 John. There's amen. amen. Third John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to what he's saying here. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Mm -hmm. He's saying, look here, I want you to have a good life. I'm believing for you to have a good life, a prosperous life, whether it be in relationship, whether it be in finances. All this is a part of your prosperity. It says prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. Now, I'm going to do the soul part of you. Because the soul part of you has to prosper. In order for it to prosper, it has to have an agreement 
with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. <clears throat> Glory to God. Watch this. The, sto the, the soul starts to prosper when it gets when it gets in agreement with the Holy Spirit. And it and it proves what is good right. and acceptable and the perfect will of God. When it gets in agreement with the Holy Spirit. I laughed because my wife, she kept repeating that over and over again this morning. Because you have to prove this. You don't prove it to God, you prove it to yourself. Okay? When the Word of God is preached, taught, or you read it, it's soul food. Come on, come on. Yeah. You hear it? It's yeah. soul yeah. food. Yeah. That the that the soul may be nourished and grow or mature because it's renewed. And it comes in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take my time because I'm just gonna preach this thing here pretty soon. Come on. I, see, I, I don't want to get too excited because you got to understand. If there's no agreement between you and your soul and the Holy Spirit, you can't walk with it. Because you think opposite of how the Spirit operates. Mm -hmm. Oppose His Word, God said, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, meaning God, right. and He will make your way. Right. Now, if I'm not acknowledging Him and I'm leaning to my own understanding, that means I'm not in agreement with the way God say do things. Yeah. You don't mind if I use your testimony right quick, do you? She was talking about she didn't value time. When the Holy Spirit came and says, okay, I want you to start valuing time because that's how you redeem time because you value it. If she would not have listened to the Holy Spirit and would have leaned on her own understanding and kept saying, this is the way my parents taught me, this is the way I'm going to teach my children. She would have avoided the information that the Holy Spirit just shared with her to prosper her life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love being on time. I do. I, it drives me crazy when I'm late. It does. Listen to me. But because the Holy Spirit told me to be patient with her, that he got her, he a teacher, I sat back. And I allow the Holy Spirit to do what it's supposed to do. Because as long as I would try, nothing would ever happen. She woke up with a revelation. I try to beat a revelation. <laughs> you understand me? But that's the law. Right, right. But I allow the same love that God shared with me and the patience he shared with me to give to her. Yeah. You follow me? Mm -hmm. She got it. Are uh, uh, you following me? Mm -hmm. So therefore, who benefits? Who prospers here? both of us because my soul just went to another level of patience you understand me now you see my soul is starting to develop because i'm in agreement with the holy spirit one of the biggest issues that we have is not being in agreement with the holy spirit is because we want to figure it out for ourselves because the way it was just shown to me is stupid and crazy unless i put my hand on it do it this thing ain't gonna work because I know it works because he, it works for me to when I do it this way. But you're not dealing with you. That's right. That's right. You understand right. me? Yeah. This is not your mind that you're dealing with. You're dealing with another person because God created and molded them and shaped them this way. Yeah. So my patience has to have its perfect work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. In order... For you, listen to me very well. In order for you to capitalize on God's will for your life, your heart has to be right. Your heart has to be right. One of the first things, this is the killer of hearts, unforgiveness. It's hard to agree with the things of God if you have unforgiveness. Why? Because unforgiveness, and I'm going to read a couple of definitions for you in a little bit here. Unforgiveness puts you in a place where you want to continue 
to charge someone with a crime. And you want to see them punished. Forgive means to send forth, send away. Besides this other meaning, it means to remit or forgive a debt being completely canceled. I love that right there, that part. To forgive a debt being completely canceled. Anybody got that? Two dollars, ten dollars, five dollars, a bill, just a bill, just a bill. Just a bill. I just want to I'm give back to you. I just want to use an example. Okay. This is this one. Okay. This one. This one. This one. Committee. Oh, you stay right there. Come on. Watch this. Okay. Get over here to people. That's your ten dollars. Okay. All right. Loan me ten dollars. I see that. It took you a long time to do <laughs> Okay, here's ten dollars. You loan me. Okay? You loan me. Right? right? Okay? Watch this here. I come to you, I want to pay back my debt. So I come to you and I say, here's my ten dollars. I mean your ten dollars that you gave me. Right? And I give you your money back to you. That's a debt paid. You understand me? Now forgiveness is like this here. Loan me ten dollars. Okay? You say, no, I don't want to loan it to you, I'll give it to you. Okay? Okay? Do it over again. Now, now give me $10. I want to give it to you. I, I want to give it to you. I don't want to loan it to you. I want to give it to you. Okay. I have $10 that she just gave me. Okay? In my mind, I'm thinking she loaned. So what I do, I try to come in and give her $10 back to her. Here, this is your $10. I owe you this. But I gave it to you. Uh-uh, no, I owe you this. But I gave it to you. But I, I owe you this. You don't owe me anything. Here's unforgiveness. Watch this. Because she give me, take me in. because she gave me ten dollars. Okay? In my mind, I think I owed her something. But she gave it to me. Here's the problem we have with saying we forgave and we didn't have not forgiven. Mm -hmm. Because in my mind she gave me something, but my mind keeps saying I gotta pay her back. But her mind, true forgiveness says, I gave that to you. I don't want it back. Even though I received it, I didn't receive the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So I always think I owe. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Now oppose, right? Let's, let's, let's switch shoes around, okay? Now ask me for the money. Let's switch shoes. Ask me for the money. Can I get $10? Yeah, I'll loan you $10. Here you go. All right? Now you can't pay me back, okay? All right, then put the money away. Now, if you see it, I see the money, I'm gonna want my money back. <laughs> okay, all right? Now, I come to you, and I say, where my money at? Well, I'll be ducking first, because I don't have it. Huh? Because <laughs> I don't have it. I want my money. But I don't have it. But I, need, I, I gave you $10. I, but I, don't I want my it. money back. I'll tell you what, when I come to you, I'll tell you what, next year, hey, I want to see you. All right, next pay come around. I come, and I look here. All right, you got paid for my money. And no, you know my mom. I don't care nothing about nobody being sick. I want my money. I, don't, I want my money. You know what? You can't never get nothing from me no more. And you walked away. You walked away. You understand me? Now, every time I see her, I have unforgiveness because she owed me a debt. I want my debt paid. And because I, she owed me, I won't forgive her. See, for unforgiveness is like somebody owing you something and you want that debt paid. If you don't know how to forgive a debt, you're always going to look for that person to pay you. You're going to get what's coming to you. God don't like ugly. God don't like evil. You always say these crazy things because you want revenge. Right. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Yes, right. And if I don't know how to forgive a debt, then that's all it is. It's just like financial debt. Your debt is forgiven. You go through bankruptcy, uh, chapter 13, I believe it is, after they get all they can get from you, the rest of your debt is forgiven. Yeah. You get a clean slate. You got to take a period of time to start over, but God don't work that way because he cleans you up right then and there. Yeah. 
God saying to you, you kid, oh, that's going to get man this money back now. You know, you're going to get a little bit here. Come on now. You get this man back his money. So I'm talking about it, but if you don't want to get in there. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, right? But this is what God is saying here. When you get a definition of forgive, it means to forgive the debt. It's, you no longer owe it. When Jesus paid the price for us on the cross, he forgave all our sins. We don't owe him anything. For you to understand that your debt was paid on the blood on the cross. We put ourselves back under the law when we can't forgive. We've heard it said, we minutes a lot of times, when you forgive, it ain't for the person, it's for you. It frees you up, right? Well, I'm going to take it another step further. Watch this. He's on. Verse 8, chapter 8, verse 22. Okay? While the earth remains. Okay, let's go back up and read uh, from verse 20. Then the Noah built an altar to the Lord and took every clean animal and every clean bird and, and offered a burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a, smo a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said, said in his heart. What did the Lord say that? He said this in his heart. I will never again curse the ground of man. For man, I'm sorry, curse the ground for man's sake. Stop right there for a minute. When he said this and he said this in his heart, he purposing a promise to himself. Listen, he's purposing a promise to himself. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to skip down. It says, Nor will I again, uh, nor will I again destroy any living thing as I have done. While the earth remains, while there's still human form on the earth, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Stop right here. Seed time and harvest. For whatever a man sow, that's what he'll reap. When you don't forgive, you bind up God's hand. Yes. He can't forgive you. Listen, listen to it. Let's, let's go right there. Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 11 right quick. I don't want you to see it in scripture. I don't want to go too fast because you know me, I, I have a million scriptures. Mark 11, verse 25. And it says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have something against another or anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your transgressions. Now, stay right there. I'm going to read another one for you right quick. You, you don't have to follow me. You just, you just you stay right over there. So I'm going to Luke 6. It says in 37 in Luke 6, it's judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. For whatever a man sow, this is what I'm saying to you. And I had to show you those two scriptures, so I want you to read it in the Word. But you got to understand, we, people have, we've been taught to hold a debt against somebody. You can forgive, but you can't forget. Now, if, if, my, if I don't have a debt, there should be no record. It should be a sponge. Mm -hmm. You understand me? If my if I pay off my house and they say you you don't owe us anymore, it should be on that record that this case is closed. It's a done deal. You understand me? So therefore, when I forgive, I have to understand that my debt has been paid. 
Listen to me. God forgave us. I have to know that God forgave me. Yes. That my debt has been paid. Yes. My confidence is when I do something wrong and I go to him and ask for forgiveness, my debt is paid because I ask for forgiveness. He wiped my slate clean. He said in his word, you understand me? Yes. That he will put forward in the sea of forgiveness and he remember it no more. Right. So therefore, that's what he's expecting us because last week we talked about being perfect. Right. Be like your father, perfect. So when you're saying, I forgive, understand, go inside your heart. Is there a debt I'm looking for them to pay? If I'm looking for something to happen to these individuals, or if I just forgiven them, they don't owe me anything. Because remember, unforgiveness is saying somebody owe you. Because you're looking for a debt to be paid. Are you following me? Is, I mean, was that simple enough? So therefore, my mind has to kick in and say, when somebody owed me something, am I willing to forgive them of a debt? That's why he said, don't loan anybody else. Give it to them. Because now you're going to put yourself in a position where you can have ill feelings toward that person. And God said, I can't bless you because you bind up my hand. Because you won't let them go, I can't let you go. Or whatever man bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose from heaven. So God wants us to do some loosening. So we can do the receiving of the things in which he promised to us. And our heart has to be right to maintain it. Because the only thing the enemy has to do is come in and make you mad. I want to say another word. <laughs> okay? Make you mad and you'll be willing to throw it all away. How many times have we thrown something away because we were upset? How many times? I want you think about it for a minute. How many times have you thrown something away that you know God bless you with because of your heart. So I told you we're going to get back to the basics because when you get back to the basics, this is what you build on. I can build a perfect life because my soul is prospering. So therefore, when I'm going through things, I see the enemy coming at me. I know how to respond to a bad situation. I know how to respond to a good situation. Why? Because I have now insight on what I'm looking at. It says when you should be teachers, or when you ought to be teachers, you have someone or you have need to be taught all over again. The elementary principles of the oracles of God. Why is this here? Because you forgot the basics of how things was built. It's built on agreement, forgiveness, and command. I have to come in agreement with God's word to forgive. Because you can't forgive on your own because of our bad hearts. You have to learn how to forgive so therefore you stay in right fellowship with God. Because you hold God hand bound because you don't want to forgive. I can't stress that enough. Again, sowing and reaping is a commandment of a promise that he put over the earth. He's not going to come against his word. You become your own curse. You put your own self under the law. And I'm going to show you this. I thought a commandment was a law. Commandment is not a law. Commandment is an order that you put things in. Mm -hmm. It's glory to God. It is supported by a law of making it work. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He never said, or else. These are, by, these are the commandments of now of the new covenant. That you love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. 
Next one is love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments, all the other laws weigh on. If I can get you in the perfect law of liberty, which is love, you will outdo the law. Because now you learn how to operate in the spirit of God. And against such, there is no law. See, a commandment, when the Ten Commandments was given, they had to have rules and regulations to make sure the Ten Commandments worked. One, thou should not kill. Okay, you shouldn't kill. Okay, what are we going to do for the people to make sure that they don't kill nobody? Now we've got to put all these rules and regulations in here so therefore they can meet the first what? Commandment. Are uh, you following me? You should love your mother and your father, honor them. Right now, we got these two rules and regulations. If you go back to the Old Testament, if a son acted unseemly, he was stoned. Now, you act this way, right there, right there. You know what I'm saying? That's a law. But the commandment was, or the decree was, is for you not to. Now I'm beginning to understand. So when he commanded me to love, it says you have to do this out of your own heart. You. I'm going to see if I honor God, if I honor Jesus, if I trust Him and I agree with Him, I am going to have to, and I'm going to show you this by definitions, I am going to have to do this by the submission of my willingness to love God or to trust God. It's not a law. <clears throat> but there is a law of nature that exists in the world for whatever a man so. It Watch this here. It governs man. You don't have to worry about police governing you because if you slow bad see, it's going to come back to you. You live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Oh, you have to hear what I'm saying to you. Because it's already in the atmosphere. God already made a promise back there over in Genesis as long as the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. He can't come against your bad planning of seed. Hmm. Command to set in order a point commandment to give order where it is where where it is in a mild voice to speak to communicate with a superior or a commander. Command. It's not a commandment. That's a command. In order for you to have a commandment, you must have a first hand command. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. A command. which is impossible by degree or law. In order for me to, com to have a commandment, that has to be something that was out of order. Mm -hmm. In order for me to put it in law, I had to make a decree mm -hmm. for order to come. Yes. So therefore, things will be put in its proper place. Order. To establish a system or a social organization, watch right, this here, a condition in which freedom from diso listen, disorder or disruption. I say it again. A condition in which freedom from disorder or disruption. If I'm putting something in order, I'm putting it in its proper place. Are, are you following me? Command to have control or authority over a rule in order to give authority. So therefore, if I have order 
and I have a command. My command is for me to put something in order. Your job is to respect the command without the law. But when you don't respect the command without the law, then law has to be put in place. Well, here Jesus is saying, I will leave you these commandments. And they are done by your respect or your love for him. Because he's not going to put the law because he's already counseled out for the law because he wanted to see who really had this heart. Who trust him. Who believe in him. Because if you love me, which implies there are some people who don't love him. Let's go over there right quick. Let's go to uh, John 14. Uh, am I taking my time? Am I moving slow enough? I like this here. Go to verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. If. Mm -hmm. If. Mm -hmm. He told he had to throw that if in there. Why he had to throw the if in there? Because we were doing all right until he said if. Yeah. If you love me, keep my commandments. He said, my commandments. I want you guys to see something. Uh, flip over. Uh, 15, 12. Notice he said, keep 12 and 15 and say, this is my commandment. Because I'm reading this and he kept saying, keep my commandments. But he said, oh, in 15, because I wanted to see what his commandments were. I kept reading because I love what is, what is your commandments? Because mm -hmm. he said, keep my commandments. And in verse 12 here and 15, he said, this is my commandment. Meaning one command. Not two or three, just one. That you love one another as I have loved you. There's no law behind that. You have an option of doing it or not doing it. Be not deceived, for God is not muffled, or whatever a man so. That's what you're going to read. Okay, I'm going to say it a couple, couple more times, and I wanted to see again. Be not deceived, for God is not muffled, or whatever a man so. That's what you're going to read. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Be not deceived, for God is not muffled. It's over in Galatians chapter 6, by the way, uh, verse 6. Be not deceived, for God is not muffled, or whatever a man so. That's what, that's what he's going to read. Why do I have to say this over and over again? Because your sowing is going to take care of itself. God is not going to impose a law on you to get revenge because your debt has already been paid. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to stop right there. Your debt's already been paid. He's not looking to punish you. He's not looking to get revenge on you because it's going to take care of itself. I hope I'm, I hope I'm saying this here, man. I hope I'm moving slow enough that you can get this here. Because whatever you build, you got to build on your heart. Yes. You're going to have to have a pure and clean heart in order for you to build on what God wants you to have. Mm -hmm. Because he don't want the enemy to come and steal what he's trying to give you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Go to First John, chapter 4. See, once my heart is made right, once my heart is made right, and I know how to forgive, because the majority of all our issues is unforgiveness. This happened to me when I was a kid. That happened to me when I was a kid. When I was coming up, you did this here to me. Oh, I'm not right here because this here is what happened to me. Okay, 30 years on passed by, and you're serious holding on to this thing while you're looking for a debt to be paid. Oh, glory to God. I'll say it again. You're looking for a debt to be paid. Time has elapsed, and you're still looking for this debt that will happen to you when you was a child to be paid. It's not going to be paid. That's right. And you're sitting around here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Glory to God. 
There is no fear in love, but a perfect love casts out all what? Fear. Because fear involves what? Torment. Torment. When I have not forgiven my past, I'm tormented in wanting somebody else to be hurt or pay a price for what was done to me way back when. Even if way back when was just yesterday. Are, are you following me? Mm -hmm. I can't get past my yesterday because I'm looking for you to get hurt today. That's right. And every day I wake up, I'm still looking for you to get hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm holding me up from succeeding in life and God command me to love, but I can't get into love because I have a bad heart. I have unforgiveness in my heart because I'm looking for this debt to be paid. Amen. Your debt was paid on the cross. Watch this. If you don't give mercy, you will not receive mercy. Mm -hmm. See, your forgiving is about you yes. displaying mercy. Yes. If you don't display mercy, how are you going to receive mercy? Right. See, 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 if you want to think about forgiveness or unforgiveness, think of it in this matter. When they say it's not for you, it's not for the person, it's for you, you you're right, it is for you. Because you're going to want mercy. You're going to want forgiveness somewhere down the line because you're going to do something. And if you don't know how to give, how would you expect to receive? I did something wrong, God, please forgive me, please forgive me. And he's looking at you, okay. You, you, you can't, I can't forgive you. See, watch this, can I share this with you? Y'all ready for this here? I'm going to tell you something right now that's going to blow you out of the water. When you forgive, you put God in the position to touch a person's heart to forgive you that you don't have a debt. Meditate on that just for a minute. Let that soak in for a minute. When you forgive, and you're quick to forgive, when you're ready to run to the Father, see, somebody can do something wrong. You can do something wrong to somebody. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. They might move from here to California. You don't have no phone number. You don't have no address. You don't know how to get in contact with them. But you know you done done something wrong to that person. You understand me? I go to the Father. Father, I forgive everybody that come across my path that done something wrong with me. Right now, with a pure heart, I have nothing, no one owes me a debt. I forgive. Will you please forgive me of that trespass that I've just done against my brother? I can't get in contact with him. All of a sudden, you walk down the street one day and you run across their path. And you look at him, man, I am so glad to see you. Man, I just want to say, man, when I decided, uh, man, forget that, man. That's up there in this old way, but I can't forget you for that. Right, right. Tell you how I know this. I'll tell you how I know this. When God first started dealing with me about forgiveness, there was a young man who was a partner with me in business. And everybody knew my past being in the streets, you know what I'm saying, man, doing crazy stuff. Well, this young man had got put out of his apartment. And we helped him pack his stuff up and move. But he had to go out of town to take care of some business. So he had a work van, and he put as much as he could on this van. He had a, a leather bed, king-size bed, everything. Man, we piled in the van, and we parked the van in front of the house. I went out one night, man, and I got crazy. I went and sold his stuff. Yeah, his leather furniture, his king-size bed. 27 inch TV, the, the new ones when they were first coming out. I would not sold it. Because I was on it. And he came back, man, he was mad. Man, this guy was mad, mad. And I looked at him, he knew I couldn't pay him back. And it messed up our friendship. But when I started getting my life together, I had no contact with him at all. At all. I started getting my life together. God started talking about this forgiveness. And I started praying and I started forgiving people. And I saw in my heart, you know what I'm saying? But I think the last person I forgave was my mother. I never forget when she got a lot of legs amputated and I went to the hospital here and I couldn't look at her. 
And I'm like, why can't I look at my mother? This is my mother. She just got a leg cut off. You know what I'm saying? I want, I want to look at my mother. And the Holy Spirit says, you have unforgiveness in your heart toward her because she left your father. At that moment, I said, I forgive her. And all of a sudden, my eyes opened. I was able to see it. We was able to have a great conversation. Well, lo and behold, I'm on the street one day. And I see my man. To the point where I can't run and hide, I have to confront him. And I go and I confront him, and he looks at me and he said, He said, Thomas, man, I know you was crazy back then, man. Please don't worry about that stuff, man. I said, We are? He said, Yeah, we are. Right. Is there anything I can do for you? Are you all right? I said, Yeah, I'm fine. I said, you know, I, he said, I see you don't got your stuff together. He said, But that was that time. He said, I ain't living in no past. And because he doesn't live in the past, he has a thriving business right now. He had he has a thriving business right now with all sorts of government contracts. And one thing he told me sometimes I can't live in the past because I got a future. Right. Right. So he released me and I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and it showed me right there that there's power in forgiveness yeah. when you forgive. Yeah. If you don't have the ability to forgive, you bind your own hands because God can't do anything on your behalf. You're gonna have to let go. You are going to have to decide if you want the promise of the covenant that God put on the earth to come against you. Or are you going to get into blessings and allow the blessings to flourish? You make the choice. You, you make that decision. God's not going to make it for you. The commandment is there so therefore you know that you have an option. But you only do it by you making that choice. Well, how do I love? Well, I love by allowing God a love that he loves me with to come on the inside of me. And ever what I sense in my spirit that makes me feel good about this life is the same I give out of me to love somebody else with. That's the Holy Spirit loving on you. And I hope I describe it to a place where you understand that. So it's like you're sitting in a room and you just, man, God just bless you. You were about to be put out in the street and somebody just came and gave you your rent money. And oh my God, and it was right on time. If you don't remember but nothing but that time when he showed up and how awesome that felt. Mm -hmm. If you start meditating that on itself, then you will see how God loves you. And if you take that love and you allow it to harness its power inside of you, and that's the same love you take and you love someone else with. Mm -hmm. But if you have forgive, unforgiveness inside of you, you're looking for a debt to be paid, so therefore you, you're not going to be able really to sense that type of love inside your heart. Remember, God lives in you. I can't stress this enough. God lives in you. He wants to work through you. But He can't work through you if you don't allow Him to if you continue to lean on your own understanding and not trust him, how can two walk together unless they agree? He's given us a commandment to love, not a law. And because we don't have a law to do this here, he's looking to see where your heart is. Do you really love him? I love God. Oh, I love God. Well, as long as he's doing something for you, you love him. But what about when he ain't doing something for you? It seems like all oh, hell on broke loose and everybody coming against you. Do you love him? Well, can you close your eyes and say, God, I remember when you showed up. I remember when I didn't have anything needed. Somebody knocked on my door and brought me through. I remember when you showed up. But I don't have anything to hold on to because I remember that love about you. Even in this time, I know your love. Well, I know they just did that wrong to me. I'm going to forgive them. Because I know your love. See, his love has to be important to you. Just like you hold your baby. That's what God holds us. That's the way he holds us. He holds us in his arms that way. And he rocks us. He wants to nourish us. He wants to comfort us. But we have to receive that. Suppose she didn't receive that. She'll be trying to get out of your lap. She'll be fighting you. I don't want you to hold me. You're embarrassing me. Let me go. Uh-uh. No, uh-uh. That's what we do to God. And he said, I want to hold you just like a little child that you are. I want to rock you to sleep. I want to pour my love out on you. Don't resist. Don't try to do things my way. 
I resist. So I can't receive that love. I'll give you a small testimony. How God it finally showed me his love. And I pray my daughter don't mind. Because he used her. Because we was going through some things at one time in the household. And I wasn't her favorite. But I love her. You gotta understand, I, I, I love her. And I couldn't express or give her my love. Because she was rejecting my love because of where we were. And I'm like, okay, how do I do this here? And show her that we can get past this. Well, the Lord says, stop trying. And just receive. Well, I receive his love. Then I receive whatever she had for me. Regardless of what it was. My heart had to be right. And the Lord said, you just keep receiving my love. In spite of whatever you're going on, you receive my love. And as long as I receive his love, I got to see him. And all of a sudden, my eyes open one day, and I got to see hearts start to change. Mm -hmm. And he says, see, you can change your heart, because you can change your atmosphere, because you know how to love. Because I didn't judge. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to figure out how no more. I surrendered that. And when you surrender that, you will watch a God that loves you, exalt you. When you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will exalt you in due time. For all the crooks or bents in your life, He will straighten. When you're trying to get some people to walk a path and you try your best and you know this is what the Lord wants because He done told you and you take your hand off, that's God. He said, I will not forget your labor of love. I pray that you really receive this today. With all my heart, understand when you're in unforgiveness, you're looking for someone to pay a debt. And you're out of agreement with God. Are you hearing me? Let the debt go. Christ paid it mm -hmm. on the cross. Mm -hmm. You want to flourish? You want to receive your promises? Let the dead go. I, I, I can't say that enough. I mean, the Holy Spirit keeps saying to me, tell him, say, let the dead go. Mm -hmm. The dead has been paid. Jesus. Holy Spirit in the room right now. Say, it's been paid. Say it with me. Say, it's been paid. Say it again. Say, it's been paid. The debt has been paid. No one owes me anything but to love me. I owe no one anything but to love them. For the debt Glory to God has been paid. Oh, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, as the Holy Spirit right now fills this place. Allow the hearts of your people to be filled with your love. Just as, or even as, the soul prosper, show shall they prosper, and be in health. You just gave us one key of us being in health and prospering, being free. There is not a debt that's old. Every debt is forgiven. For we are just as our fathers in heaven. So just as he is, so are we in this world. He hold nothing against us and we hold nothing against anyone. I thank you for this here. I thank you for this in the name of Jesus. 
how you get that power in the blood. Glory to God. Hey, listen to this here. Listen to what the Holy Spirit just said. He says, Satan can't hold nothing over your head when you forgive from your heart. You just became perfect. When you forgive from your heart. You know when you forgave something that's a done deal that's over with. You know when, where, where it comes from. He says, Satan can't hold nothing over here. He can't even torment you and bring up old stuff. Because when you see the person, it, it don't even bother. You'd be so glad to see him. You just want to embrace him. Remember when we gave the illustration about the $10? As long as I thought that she owed I me, mean, I, I owed her, I would keep trying to bring it. But she had already forgiven me of that. Don't be like that person that keeps trying to pay a debt that's already been paid. Oh, glory to God. So listen to what he's saying. He said, don't be like that person that's trying to pay a debt that's already been paid. There's some things in which some people have done wrong. That's what those people just showed me. And they continue to try to go pay a debt. Debt been paid. You have to receive that. You have been forgiven. You're not forgiving yourself. That's what I'm saying. Today, forgive yourself. I pray that you enjoy the message and it has been a blessing to you. For prayer, donations, or any other services, we can be reached at 804-859-2273. Our Sunday services are held at 2557 South Crater Road, Suite E at 10 o'clock here in Petersburg, Virginia. Our pastors, Thomas and Alicia Warren, will welcome you with open arms. I'm Pastor Brown, speaking on behalf of the entire Eden Covenant Ministry family, saying, Jesus is Lord.